you know, it's funny, I've interviewed hundreds of garage inventors, and I guess part of it's the money. I mean, there's a little bit of that, you know, Ralph Crand and, you know, I'm, I'm going to get rich quick thing that's in there, uh, which is very American. But there's also kind of a, a hint of immortality, you know, to see your product on the store shelf, to be the person who came up with the post-it note or whatever that is, and to kind of change the way Americans and the world live because of your product, your idea, is very, very appealing to a lot of people. And they just, that's sometimes, that's the passion. It's just to make that mark on the world, to have been in this world, changed it, and then leave, and having made that change is, is huge. And sometimes a garage inventor, that's sort of deep inside, when you kind of peel back the, the onion, you find that's what they're thinking back in, their, in, the, in the heart of all this. And of course, money is a big deal too. You can, the right idea, the paper clip, you, you, know, you, you become wealthy, and then for the next five generations are all living off of your idea, and that's, that's, that's a pretty contagious concept as well. I think there's a, a passion and an individuality of not wanting to be part of the crowd. They're, they're, they, they, want to, they need and want to stand out. I think that's a common thread with all of them. I also think it's the feeling that you, you can you know, most of us, most of the people in the world see a problem and they just complain about a problem. An inventor sees a problem and says, you know what, this is an opportunity. And they look at that problem as, hey, I can come up with a way of solving that problem and make it advantageous to myself and to my family. And that's what's kind of going on inside most of the garage inventors I've talked to. And that's what makes them different than the rest of the population. I, I, and that's exactly, it's definitely not rocket science, and sometimes the simplest idea is the greatest idea. You don't have to be using circuitry and wires and electronics. Sometimes it's just bending a piece of wire and turning it into a paper clip. So it, simplicity is sometimes the, the, the hallmark to a successful inventor. But what they, I guess my encouragement would be both double-edged. I mean, I've also seen inventors who've spent fortunes, their 401k, their kids' uh, uh, college educations, pursuing something that hasn't taken off. So th there is reason to think carefully before moving forward, but there's also reason to move forward because if you believe in your idea and it, it feels right, you can just, you know it's got it, you can feel it in your gut, then you gotta go after it. And it, to me, garage inventors are as American as apple pie, it's really Americana because most, America's all about freedom, there's no question about that, but we're really about entrepreneurship and the freedom to, that anyone can come up with the idea and have a, a, an amazingly successful career and life from it. And I think that's so, such an American belief and ideal that that's what is really fuels so much of what garage inventors are about. They look like everybody. They can be seven year old, a seven-year-old girl, a 93-year-old man. They come in all different colors, shapes, and sizes. I've met them all. They all look different, but there's something inside that's kind of the same. Their brains are something the same. They know they have a passion for what they've come up with. And most of them, it's really an obsession, too, because once they have that idea and they really feel they can make it happen, they're addicted to it. They, every day they try and see what they can do to take it the next step, the next step to try and make it to be the success it is. And they want to see it on store shelves. They want to see people talking about it. They want, they want it out there and they're working to do that. So it's, it's not only the financial reward, I don't think. I mean, that's a big part of it, but I think it's also just making that difference to see that they've changed the landscape of marketing and of the marketplace in some way is what they're after. I think now is the best time to be a garage inventor, better than Thomas Edison's day or any other time, because of the internet, if nothing else. If, at the very least, you have access to the marketplace, you know, just as simply as, as setting up a web address. So uh, whether you can get people to know about it, that's another story, but at least you can have your own little store on the internet and have a global audience. So that's something that the world has never seen before, and that's really changed it, where before you really needed to 
you know, get to know someone in a department store somehow to get yourself onto you know, one of the home shopping networks or whatnot. Now you don't need that. You really can sell your product from anywhere and you don't need a big factory to do it. That's the one thing that's changed. I think the, the common denominator I've seen between successful inventors and not successful inventors, a lot of it comes down to marketing. Sometimes so much energy is put into the development of the product and perfecting the product that there's no money or energy left over to do the marketing. And without the marketing, the world doesn't know about it. And then you're stuck with a great product, but, but no one there to buy it. So the smarter inventors seem to divide up their resources and their finances so that they can still create the product, but then they have the money to actually go out there and market it. And that seems to be the common thread between successful and, and those that are less successful. One thing that's amazed me when I, when I meet an inventor and product, I'll look at the product and go, wow, great product, bright guy, great, bright woman. It seems like a natural. But sometimes the best product doesn't have the most success, and sometimes the goofiest offbeat product has huge success. A lot of times it's one, just the luck of, of whatever is involved in making something a success, and then marketing is another big factor.